let's begin with the session today's topic that we are going to talk about is top 50 current affairs question for clad 24 exam so what do i my name is riddhi i am your mentor for the session we are going to quickly start with the session now before starting with the session the, this is what yesterday's discussion looks like a lot of you think that it's impossible but do you really think that it's impossible? Because we know, let's do it. Let's start with the session. Let's try to understand. Let's try to, you know, make sure that there's nothing that's impossible. Everything is something that, we, you know, we can achieve. So now that I'm trying to talk about something that we are planning to be, uh, you know, achieve, let's quickly begin with the session. Let's quickly try to, uh, you know, dive into the session and talk about it now that we know that this is a clat based exam this is uh, sorry this is a clat based discussion that we are having today so majorly the questions that we have framed today will have passages so quickly skim through the passage you all know the trick you don't have to dive or you know you don't have to spend much time in the passage reading in the passage so i'm starting with the passage now i am going to give 10 seconds to maximum 15 seconds for every passage quickly watch it and then we'll move ahead come on guys let's let's start with the first passage what is this passage trying to talk about some discussion with regards to relation between india and canada trying to talk about supporting of khalistan movement and then it discusses about the important leaders over here so it is trying to talk about prime minister modi then there are some years that have been mentioned so this is pretty much this is in general about the passage now, now that uh, you have quickly skimmed through the passage, let's move ahead with this. This is the part two of the same passage. Now, here we are also trying to talk about some exclusive state, which is Punjab. And then we are trying to talk about Chief Minister Captain Amrinder Singh. Now, when was this uh, Chief Minister is the Chief Minister for Punjab? till date captain amrinder singh or someone else another thing what are we trying to see here we are trying to talk about agriculture we are trying to talk about uh, you know alliance with the new democratic party and then the khalistan referendum on the canadian soil all of these things and the today's times g20 summit all of these discussions are there in the part two of the passage now coming to the third part of the passage now, what is this passage, last final part of the passage trying to talk about? This passage is trying to talk about Operation Blue Star and something with regards to Golden Temple. We all know that the history of Khalistan movement in general has been, uh, you know, uh, has had its soil or has its root from the, starting from this Operation Blue Star. So, Talking about all of these things, I'm sure you have gone through all of these things. Now, before going ahead with the questions and, you know, before going ahead with the further discussion, and in case you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, perfect timing, guys. Come on, subscribe to the channel, like the videos, share it with everybody who's preparing for CLAT and drop in good comments, you know. Your comments actually help us, you know, give that boost, make us feel better about, you know, making good videos for you also. So what are you waiting for? All of these things are free. Are. Come on, let's do it. So let's start with the questions now. What is this first question trying to talk about? Who is the current prime minister of Canada? You have the questions right in front of you guys. Come on, quickly answer uh, and tell me who is the, you know, what is the answer for the first question? Wonderful, wonderful. We've already started receiving answers. Wonderful. Perfect. Are you guys already smart? We already know Justin Trudeau is the 23rd Prime Minister for Canada. We already know these things. Now, moving ahead, talking about the next question. What is the name of the Khalistan supporter? Uh, what is the name of the Khalistan supporter killed in which Canada is uh, for which Canada is accusing uh, of India? So you see the uh, 
what do you say you see the options here now let's try to see the answer come on guys how many of you know wonderful wonderful guys superb superb already all of you know the answer superb hardeep singh nijjar canada accuses india of the role in sikh leaders murder and you know recently india has also asked something with regards to evidences and the discussion for the khalistan movement is still on so perfect wonderful superb answers now talking about the third question in which of the following years the operation blue star carried out by the indian army this this is a major event that has taken place in india's history and we must be aware of this as i told you in the classes as well operation blue star the khalistan movement all of this is interlinked okay so we have a lot of you are talking about option b okay 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 wonderful guys wonderful superb the movement was crushed in india following operation blue star in the year 1984 and operation black thunder which had taken place in 86 and 88 wonderful guys superb so understanding this we are all aware that operation blue star had taken place in the year 1984 now moving ahead what is the next question question number 4 last question let's try to quickly solve this thing what is the answer for this how many of you are aware of it come on guys so there's a mix mix approach over here some of you are saying c some of you are saying b okay some again some say c some are trying to say b let's let's see let's see how many of you are you know right come on we'll we'll wait for three more seconds and then we'll and then i'm going to show the answer okay wonderful guys so the answer here is option b that is 1985 see this is pretty much a static information here there is nothing that we are trying to talk about you know something you know there has there are some reasons to it no this is pretty much static this was something that was already there that had taken place years ago but the current day discussion the current day issue with regards to khalistan has had its soil there i mean it's it's deep rooted since the 80s because we remember the whole chronology chronology samajhiye aap log guys see if you try to understand when i'm trying to talk about all of this it starts from what it starts from the constituent assemblies debates then we try to talk about the green revolution then we try to talk about the operation blue star then the flying of sikhs and then all of the issues so the even the farmers protest that had taken place somewhere pre covid or during the covid time all of this is a part of your uh studies with regards to the khalistan movement now let's quickly move to the next passage what is this passage trying to talk about okay this passage is with regards to what this is trying to talk about the united nations general assembly so this passage is with regards to international organizations if you all remember we all know this thing that these passages every segment of the passage is divided or given specific importance so there is one specific passage that tries to talk about the international organization so this passage is trying to talk about what ending of tb from september 2022 and during this phase and what commitment to delivering uhc by 2030 now united nation universal this is basically universal health coverage and we are trying to do, uh, the united nations general assembly after what after ahead of the historic unga will which will host 
three high level meetings now there is this discussion that is going on and what are we trying to aim by 2030 we are trying to achieve something now talking about this this is the part two of the passage where we are also trying to talk about the sustainable development goals that is sdgs now if you remember we had discussed this in the classes as well sdgs and the international organizations and how are you expected to study about all of these things guys let's let's try to you know just quickly answer the uh, questions that have been asked and not spam the comment box with multiple comments or something with regards to memes and all so let's let's try to focus let's try to put as much attention as we can we are just left with four days and with very less time okay guys so let's move ahead part three of the passage two what is this part three of the passage two trying to talk about? This is trying to talk about World Health Organization and of many recommendations by the Lancet TB Commission. I genuinely believe India is more than ready to replace old tools like smear microscopy with rapid molecular test. This is a low hanging fruit. India india can also adopt shorter drug regimes and scale them quickly okay wonderful so now that you have gone through the final bits of the passage let's quickly get into the questions and try to understand so the first question says where is the headquarters of who located option a geneva b hague c new york d rome quickly answer and let me know how many of you are aware of this Wow, guys, superb. As soon as I dive into the question, you are immediately ready with the answers. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Amazing, guys. So the headquarters of World Health Organization is located in Geneva, which is in Switzerland. Superb, wonderful. Now let's move ahead. What was the theme of the World Tuberculosis Day 2023? Now, if you try to see, majority of the answers here have first bit, which is yes. Now, the next bit of this is we can. So, yes, we can or yes, let's end TB or yes, we can end TB. And the last one is none of the above. What do you think? What is the answer for this? Okay, so there are there is a mixed approach here. Some of them say yes, let's end TB, and the third some of you are saying C, which is yes, we can end TB. Okay, wonderful. See the ones who have answered C, it is the correct answer. Understanding this, guys. See, this is a there's a basic trick also to this. Yes, we can end TB is a very positive connotation, is a very positive approach that we are trying to say. See, B is yes, let's end TB, which sounds very, very, uh, you know, very plain. But when we say yes, we can end TB is a collective approach that we are trying to say. And ending of tuberculosis is always, a, it's a collective approach. It's a collective activity. So remember it like this, only then you will be able to answer. There are a lot of times when even if you don't know the answer, you can answer it by these tricks. Okay, perfect. Now, let's move ahead. The next is C. The, uh, sorry, the next is third question, which is sustainable development goals adopted by United Nations in which year? 14, 15, 13 or 12? Let's see, let's see how many of you are answering. Come on, guys. Okay, okay. Majority of you are answering it as A. Perfect. Wonderful, wonderful, guys. Superb, superb. Wonderful, guys. On 1st January 2016, we adopted this. 
but it was what we so actually it was adopted in the uh, year 2015 but on the 1st january 2016 it was declared so it it it's like you know you need to understand the question correctly now in case if there would have been another option of 2016 then that would have been the right answer but this is perfect correct wonderful guys yes yes uh, so wonderful insta wonderful youtube handle also clat topper correct 17 sdg goals great guys superb now moving ahead what is the third goal of sustainable development goals the uh, a says end poverty b says zero hunger c says good health and well being and d says gender equality what do you think guys what is the correct answer here okay some of you say d some say c b okay okay some are saying b some are saying c some are saying d okay 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 superb superb wonderful guys now let's try to see let's try to see what is the correct answer here okay good health and well being the sdg aims to prevent what needless suffering from preventable diseases and premature death by focusing on key targets that boost the health of a country's overall population so the ones who are yet to you know revise or put at put a hold on your sustainable development goals ka study make sure that you are reading it properly and reading the goals reading the goals correctly because i am seeing there is a lot of mixed approach some are saying b some are saying c some are saying d please read it correctly because remember your options will be very near clat is going to test you like this so please be aware of this and make sure that you are you know preparing your content in the right manner now now let's try see before i move ahead with the next passage it's important for you to read this message what is this trying to say focus is about eliminating all forms of distraction guys in the last four days of your exam there's one request that we all have the whole get set law team has for you all which is to completely stay away from the distraction it is important for you to be there with 100% attention because when we try to see this that you know if you if you have multiple things that you are you know uh, attached to you will not be able to focus for your exam so please make sure that you are eliminating all forms of distraction and completely working towards your goal now let's move ahead let's try to read the next passage now this passage is trying to talk about india's another big achievement that is the 19th asian games where did it take place which what was this area where which country apart from this the first part of the passage also tries to talk about the previous best at 2018 jakarta which was 70 medals 16 gold and apart from that other things that had been well and truly relegated to a distant second now let's move ahead to the next part of this passage which is trying to talk about that sunday's closing ceremony india's india's march will flag many positives team medals in shooting indicate the new depth of talent so we can see here itself that in the shooting arena itself we have superb guys wonderful a lot of you have already started answering that it had taken place in china are tum log bahut smart ho yaar wonderful it is so nice to see this uh, good response from you all so talking about this now coming to the uh, you know trying to talk about all of this <clears throat> what i'm trying to see is that with regards to shooting we have we are aware that the majority of the medals were achieved from that one single sport itself so now let's let's try to you know uh, discuss the last part of this passage which is what there have been some uh, you know five events where india saw a dip now dip means that we we the the medal count was decreased 
now again moving before i move ahead to the <clears throat> questions please make sure that you have already like share and subscribed you know you're liking the video you have already started sharing with your other clat aspirant clat aspirant friends and have already subscribed through the channel now let's move ahead let's dive into the questions so the first question you have already answered it superb guys at which of the following place 20th asian games will be held so some of you some of you have already held, uh, you know answered this thing now let's try to see how many of you are aware of it 20th asian games will be held in 2027 where is it going to take place okay 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 some of you who are answering it as c come on guys the 19th asian game had taken place in china yes superb japan is going to host the next asian games which is going to take place in the year 2027 guys don't get confused the clat exam uh, examiners are not going to ask you direct questions they are going to test you with your you know presence of mind because you are reading it as where was it where is it going to you know take place you will quickly answer it as china but remember they are not not trying to talk about china because everybody is aware of china okay now let's move ahead with the next question which country won the maximum number of medals in the 19th asian games come on how many of you are aware of this wow 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 wonderful wonderful are guys superb perfect so china now the ones who don't remember it remember it from this idea that the host country has won the ma majority of the medals so 19th asian games ka host country kon hai china hai that is why we'll remember it like this perfect the people's republic of china led the medal tally with the most number of medals won superb guys wonderful yaar now let's move ahead this year what did we see there were some new sports that were introduced now what are these new sports we are trying to see okay the first one is e sports then there's break dancing then c says both a and b and d says none of the above let's try to see how many of you are aware of this uh, you know question how many of you are aware of the answer for this question okay arush has answered with the tally with the total number uh, as well good arush very good you know but uh, it's it's good to see that you know you guys are aware of it perfect some of you are saying c somebody has answered both a and b which is correct okay again c only yes yes superb guys correct perfect answer b is not the right answer c is the right answer now another trick to remember this is in general times whenever you will have a uh, you know question like this remember this one thing that <clears throat> if you have an option where both the other two options are included majority of the times that may be the right answer so think logically and then answer you know just because tumhara ye logic ka section nahi hai that does not mean that you will not use logic in your current affairs as well because a lot of times when you use logic for your current affairs it works okay guys now let's move ahead in which of the following years the first ever asian games were held in the in new delhi we are seeing the option here 49 50 51 52 so which year do you think is the right answer okay some of you are saying yes c then there are some who have answered it as b okay guys perfect wonderful wonderful since i'm seeing majority of you have already answered is it's right 1951 okay 
remember this thing the first ever asian games had taken place in india itself so there can be another question that they may ask is where was the first ever asian game uh, games taken place and then the option might be new delhi 1951 so remember the first ever asian games had taken place in india itself okay wonderful guys very good to see the ones who have answered it as d it's the incorrect answer please make it a point that you know you read the question correctly they are trying to talk about the first ever asian games okay guys please don't spam with the with you know your personal comments don't do that guys let's let's focus on the questions let's focus on our revision let's move ahead the next topic that is passage 4 now this passage 4 is trying to talk about what now facing another geopolitical crisis something that has taken place very recently the israel hamas you know the israel palestine war and the role of hamas the fallout of israel hamas war on the global economy may take time to become clear but would become more severe if the conflict spreads to the rest of the middle east especially iran which is both a major oil producer and supporter of hamas okay now let's move ahead what is the what is the part 2 of the passage saying crude oil prices surged sharply on monday so they are trying to also talk about some economic discussion over here okay now let's move ahead let's try to see the final part of this passage which is trying to talk about what we are trying to talk about stocks as well over here okay guys now let's quickly dive into the questions what is this question trying to say in which of the following year the jewish national home in palestine under the balfour declaration was introduced come on guys i, I if you will remember i had told you with regards to the israel palestine session you are expected to what are you expected to study how are you expected to study this so let's see how many of you are aware of this okay some of you are saying a some are saying b then okay some of you are saying c as well okay guys come on there this is a lot of static information that is there so you know remember this thing that if you remember i had told this in the class as well we will have questions with mixed approach that is can and car that is current affairs related and current affairs news so when we are trying to talk about this let's see how many of you are have answered this right correct majority of you have answered this right the ones who have answered it as a it's the incorrect answer the seeds of the conflict laid in the year 1917 when the british foreign secretary arthur james balfour expressed official support of britain from a jewish national home in palestine under the balfour declaration okay guys please make a note of this yes now talking about this this i had clearly explicitly mentioned in the session if you remember about the six day war now not only if you can come on let's see how many of you can answer the question as well as between whom was this six day war taken place let's see how many of you know the answer for this who were the parties for the six day war okay okay majority of you have started answering it as a but correct smallest war but it had taken place between between whom israel gained gained control over gaza but i mean i'm still not able to you know no it's the wrong answer alpha gaming south america versus antarctica
Egypt, Israel versus West Bank, Israel and Arab countries, Israel versus Egypt. Okay, guys. Okay. The 1967 war, Israeli forces seized the Golan Heights from Syria, the West Bank and East Jerusalem from Jordan and Sinai Peninsula. And what? The Gaza Strip from Egypt. Okay. Remember this thing. Remember the content as well. Correct. The ones who have answered Egypt, yes. Yes. <clears throat> Guys, let's let's not try to make fun of these things and let's be a little more attentive. Please, guys, it's a genuine request to you all. Perfect. Let's move ahead. Now, there, of course, the global leaders are something that you must be aware of and specifically at places when there have been a lot of issues that have taken place. So, who is the current prime minister of Israel? Very Famous question and a very famous answer. I am pretty sure majority of you are already aware of this. So, let's try to see how many of you are answering. Superb, wonderful. You have already started answering. <clears throat> correct, 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 correct. Superb, guys. Wonderful. Benjamin Netanyahu is the right answer. Is a, who is an Israeli pol pol uh, politician? who has been serving as the Prime Minister of Israel since 2022. And earlier to this also, he held the office from which year? Till from 2009 to 2021. And earlier to that also in the year 1996 to 1999. Wonderful, guys. Superb. Now let's move ahead, discussing the last question for this passage. Under the Oslo Accords, Israel and the PLO... <clears throat> agree to officially recognize each other and renounce the use of violence. The Oslo Accords also established the Palestinian Authority, which received limited autonomy in the Gaza Strip and parts of the West Bank. In which of the following year did the Oslo Accord came into existence? Come on, guys. Let's see how many of you are aware of this. Okay. Sridhar has answered thrice. Superb, Sridhar. Wonderful. Yes. So I see a lot of you are concerned about are these questions from the mocks or not. Guys, it does not really matter if this is from your mock or not because we are all preparing for the D-Day. We are all preparing for the final day. And now that we are all preparing for the final day, we are expecting you all to know the best. Okay, majority of you have already started answering 1993. Superb, guys. On 13 September 1993, we saw this thing that the Israeli Prime Minister back then was what? Yitzhak Rabin and Palestinian Liberal Organization, Liberation Organization, that is PLO. Ne <clears throat> Negotiator whom Mohammed Abbas signed a declaration of principles on the interim self-government arrangements commonly referred to as the Oslo Accords. Superb, guys. 1993 is the year and I will request you all to remember the date as well. Okay? Chalo. Let's move ahead. Now talking about the next bit that is passage 5. Now what is this passage 5 trying to talk about? It is trying to talk about the Reserve Bank of India. There are a lot of figures that are there in this passage. Then there are some states. There is this discussion with regards to Gujarat, Odisha, Maharashtra, Karnataka. Okay, so now don't get, you know, scared looking at all of these numbers. Let's try to see what is this passage trying to say. Let's try to move ahead and see the next bit of the passage. Again, there are some humongous numbers over here. We are trying to see some percentages and then we see what rise as well as decline, increase, what not, multiple things plus percentages. Let's move ahead. Let's try to see the next part where we are seeing another thing which is with regards to Assam. And then lastly, it says RBI Governor Dash said while unveiling the policy recently. Now, what is this trying? What are they trying to talk about? Let's try to dive into the questions. Okay. Now, of course, first question, very easy. Who is the current governor for Reserve Bank of India? Let's try to see the options here are Shaktikanta Das, D. Subbarao, Raghuram Rajan and N. Rangarajan. 
let's try to see how many of you are aware of the answer for this thing okay already already a lot of you have started answering this superb superb wonderful guys wonderful okay correct the present governor for reserve bank of india is shakti kanta das he assumed the office on which day december 12 2018 succeeding whom earlier to him the other uh, governor for rbi was urjit patel okay now let's move ahead which of the following state has the least share of projects sanctioned by banks and financial institutions we see goa assam kerala gujarat okay so the earlier <clears throat> passage is trying to talk about discussion of projects so not understanding this let's try to see the answer here how many of you are aware of it okay kerala kerala mr menon says kerala karnika says c kerala then we have manasvi who says c kerala then we have uh, sania again c c c kerala okay wonderful again manasvi saying c okay rujula is also saying c good yaar wonderful guys you are already aware of this kerala goa and assam secured the lowest shares with kerala receiving just 0.9 of the total investment so kerala is the least amongst all okay oh dhruv says he is representing kerala <laughs> okay guys okay uh, okay so moving ahead let's try to see the next question okay quickly we'll we we'll, we are going to do some quick revision here so that let's see how many of you are aware of the concepts and in case if you are still not aware of the concepts you know what you are expected to study so after the live also you can again watch the video you can again read the passage and try try to analyze your content try to remember try to revise all of this now who is the current chairman of financial stability development council what do you think guys who is the chairman for this okay okay chaitanya says d himanshu d manasvi vira all of you gauri is saying d rujula is saying d again himanshu has been multiple times saying d okay parth also says d is wonderful guys superb yaar nirmala sitharaman also the finance minister of india is the chairperson or the chairman for financial stability development council wonderful guys superb i am so happy to see that you are all already so much prepared and you are aware of the answers okay now we are seeing okay this is a repeated question let's move ahead let's try to discuss the next bit now before going to the next part of the you know before jumping into the next passage it's important for you all to understand this thing you know there's a difference between studying step by step and studying everything all at once now what do i mean by this see you have the content already available with you you have monthly magazines you have monthly important updates you have important questions you have important topics all of this is there but when you try to study all of it at once you will not be able to study anything you won't be able to revise any bit of it but if you try to study step by step if you try to revise study revise and work step by step you are all set to achieve your goal okay guys so please make sure you know how can you improve your life try to go step by step when you try to do everything all at once it's not going to happen let's move ahead let's try to see the next passage now what is this next passage trying to say passage number 6 it is trying to talk about china's deflation what is it trying to say it is trying to talk about you know domestic spending ways on the country's post covid economic recovery and then it is trying to talk about cpi which is the consumer price index if you all remember we had discussed with regards to this in the class as well with regards to the china's deflation altogether reasons for it the figures that had been that i had discussed with you all and the important 
topics okay so understanding this let's move ahead with the next part of the passage which tries to talk about what china's gdp gdp's full form is gross development or gross domestic what is the right uh, answer for this thing what is the meaning of gdp we had also discussed something with regards to the producer price index and other parts of it so quickly answer let me know how many of you are aware of it okay wonderful guys gross domestic product yes 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 wonderful now now let's move ahead let's try to discuss the questions here the consumer price index the main gauge of inflation fell by what 0.3% in july the national bureau of statistics said having flatlined in june analysts polled by bloomberg had anticipated a dash decline in the index for july filling the blanks with the correct answer what do you think is the right answer here 0.3 0.5 6 or 7 yes guys what do you think is the right answer here okay somebody says a okay so shang says a himanshu says a niharika is saying a riya is saying a we have criminal justice who is saying a okay wonderful a superb guys wonderful now let's try to see the answer here correct it says consumer price index the main gauge of inflation fell by 0.3 in july by the national bureau of statistics okay guys wonderful now let's try to understand the next question which of the following explains the meaning of deflation in economics we had discussed this in class as well what is the meaning of deflation what do we mean by that there are four options available here always remember very less times very few times you will have the right answer as none of the above okay so don't think that it can be the right answer now try to see what is the right answer here decrease in the currency value general decline in price for goods and services or increase in the price of products and services okay so let's try to see some of you are saying a some of you are saying c some of you are saying b okay guys just because i said d right nahi hoga lot of you have started answering different different <laughs> okay wonderful let's try to see see basically deflation is what it's a general decline in the prices of goods and services typically associated with what with a contraction in the supply of money and credit in the economy during deflation we are seeing the purchasing power of the currency rises over a time okay guys so remember this thing that <clears throat> always remember this thing that deflation has no direct relation with the increase in the price so the first answer anyway option a anyway you know is not a part of it because it is trying to talk about increase in price of products and services okay and as i said d cannot be the right answer because none of the above is majority of the times you will not find this to be the right answer so please make that you know make this note now coming to the next part of it who is the current president of china come on guys you are already aware of this let's quickly answer this let's try to see how many of you are aware of it okay karnika says d chaitanya says d then we have okay majority of you shashank says d with multiple d's okay wonderful anurag is also saying d kinjal says d superb guys wonderful manasvi is saying d yo oh, wonderful guys superb shi jingping a chinese politician who has been serving as the general secretary for the chinese Commun uh, communist party he has been what the president or the paramount leader of china since the year 2012 theek hai guys wonderful now let's move ahead last question for this passage who publishes the wholesale price index wpi and the consumer price index cpi in india okay make sure you are reading the question correctly it is trying to talk about india okay guys 
Now tell me, what is the answer for this? Superb, superb, superb. Ministry of Commerce and Industry, majority of you are answering this. Let's see, is there anybody else who has some other view to it? Vedant is saying C, Yashvi is saying C, Rehan is saying C, Kinjal says C. Okay, okay. Wonderful. I love the way how you're putting it. B for bailment, C for criminal justice. Wonderful, guys. You are, you're very smart. Yaar. Superb. Chalo, nice. Now let's dive into the answer. Correct it is. The Office of Economic Advisor, Ministry of Commerce and Industry publishes the WPI data, whereas the National Statistical Office that is the NSO, Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation, publishes the Consumer Price Index. Okay? Wonderful. Super, guys. Now, let's try to read the next passage. Now, what is this passage trying to talk about? Kerala, Tamil Nadu and West Bengal are among the dash states and union territories which are yet to sign a crucial memorandum of understanding or MOU for with the union education ministry. Now that, now that they're trying to talk about union education ministry, it is obvious that they're trying to talk about something with regards to uh, education and here we are trying to see national education policy. So, Remember the new education policy or the national education policy is something that has been coming for your CLAT exam since the time it was introduced. Okay. Apart from this, what are we trying to see? Pradhan Mantri Uchitar Shiksha Abhyan, PM Usha. That was one of the other government schemes. Okay. Now let's try to see the next bit of this thing. The UGC chairman. Who is the UGC chairman? Please make a note of all of these things. Apart from this, uh, what do you, what are we trying to see? Rashtriya Uttar Shiksha Abhyan, that is our USA. Apart from that, we are trying to talk about the, there are different uh, discussion with regards to the other scheduled castes and tribes and the different places in India. So please make a note of all of these things while you're studying the education policy, because it is one of the important topics that we try to see for the you know, that we try to see that in exam, it is always there. Now, let's dive into the question. First question, who is the current Minister of Education of India? It's important that all of you must be aware of this. Come on, guys. And here you can not only, I mean, elimination method is the easiest that you can definitely use. But apart from that also, it is so easy. The answer here is very, very easy. Because if you are aware of the CMs and the governors also, you are able to eliminate one answer, which is Naveen Patnaik. You already know Nitin Gadgari is not with regards to, you know, not a minister with regards to education. Then we see Ashwini Vaishnav. He, he is the... Uh, this thing. Minister for what? Come on, guys. A for apprehension. Okay. Superb, guys. Sri Dharmendra Pradhan is the in, is India's current education minister. Okay, guys. In 1983, he began his political career as an Akhil Bharti Vidyarthi Parishad what activist. So, this is something with regards to ABVP. Perfect. Railways. Railways. Superb, guys. Already you have started answering with regards to Ashwini Vaishnav. We must be aware of this because when we are trying to talk about the Balasore train incident or the recent train uh, discussion, mm -hmm. at that time, we are trying to see that, you know, uh, Ashwini Vaishnav pl plays an important role. Now, let's move ahead. Now, let's try to see the next question. In which of the following year did the national education policy was launched? Okay. Now here, you must be aware that they are trying to talk about the new education policy, yeah? national education policy, the recent one. Okay. So let's try to see what is the answer here. Perfect. Perfect. Superb. Superb. Wonderful, guys. 
now that i've praised all of you have started answering like this b for breach of contract superb guys wonderful so we're seeing b that is national education policy year 2020 okay remember it like this or 2020 remember it with the covid year as well okay superb so the national education policy aims at making india a global knowledge superpower remember this thing as well okay guys earlier to this there have been two other education policies that had come into place what were these two education policies they had come into place in the year 1968 and 1986 reverse kar do 68 and 86 remember it like this okay now let's move ahead the third one which of the following is or are the salient features of the new education policy we are trying to see a b c teen questions and then there is fourth one which tries to uh, tries to say all of the above now what do you think can all of the above be the right answer or is there only one salient feature okay wonderful i think anurag already knows the trick yes majority of the times when you will have a uh, you know question like this and you, when you have answer where it says all of the above remember that majority of the times you will have the right answer as all of the above only okay perfect guys all of the above are the initiatives under the national education policy for what 2020 and it covers what it covers the four stages of schooling superb guys wonderful yaar you guys are already very smart <clears throat> now let's move ahead and let's try to see the next question which of the following is or are the major initiatives taken under the new education policy okay now let's try to see okay i see one more word that is d for defamation <laughs> superb guys wonderful yaar great okay now let's try to see okay majority of you have started answering okay you are already aware of the trick perfect yaar tum log bahut smart ho guys superb yes all of the above are the initiatives taken under the education policy and upliftment in the field of education perfect wonderful guys now let's move ahead now let's try to see another very important event that had taken place in this year that we are trying to talk about the surgeon oncologist who is an oncologist guys can anybody of you quickly drop in a message and let me know who is an oncologist and the here we are trying to talk about the nobel prize of asia okay so this is not only uh, uh, this passage is with regards to ramen magasese award foundation okay so this is with regards to the ramen magasese award which is also known as the nobel prize of asia okay <clears throat> someone who treats cancer okay yes cancer specialist correct correct wonderful guys wonderful so let's move ahead now let's try to see the last part of this he has also been awarded a padma shri for his contribution to the health sector wonderful guys another you know before moving ahead again i'm requesting you all please subscribe like share comment and not only subscribe but i will i would want you to you know Uh, start with your notifications as well because for the next days of your clat you're going to have a lot of amazing content that is going to come so please make sure that you're already subscribing and clicking on the bell icon now let's move ahead now let's try to see the questions here now what is the question the first question says find the odd one out vinoba bhave mother teresa priyanka chaturvedi kiran bedi if you all remember in your lmtc also i had discussed about this so quickly tell me what is the answer here yes 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 wonderful you have already started answering c is the right answer why because c priyanka chaturvedi 
if you try to see even if you don't know any of the things even if you don't understand any of these things we have all read about acharya vinoba bhave in our history books we already know mother teresa's amazing work and we know kiran bedi as somebody as the you know first woman ips apart from this priyanka chaturvedi as a name sounds very new and something that we are not aware of so when you have something like this try either try to use the elimination method or try to understand the chronology in general so if priyanka chaturvedi is the right answer c is the correct answer all the other are indian representatives or recipients of the ramen magazine award let's move ahead who among the following is the recipient of ramen magazine award for the year 2023 again you can use the same trick over here what do you think what do you think a b c or is the answer d right here <clears throat> correct 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 perfect guys wonderful 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 superb yes so as we all can see answer d is the right answer not only uh, dr ravi kanan but also apart from him all the other three also shared this award for this year that is year 2023 perfect guys wonderful now let's move ahead now let's try to see the next question which is who among the following is the first indian who got the ramen magazine award what do you think who is the uh, who was the indian first indian to receive this award wonderful wonderful guys superb superb perfect vinayak vinoba bhave an advocate of what of non violence and human rights was the first indian to win the ramen magazine say award for the community leadership now when did he receive this award in the year 1958 okay guys please make a note of this now let's move ahead last question for this passage the ramen magazine say award is named after which of the following leaders what do you think guys <clears throat> see the session is going to be very interesting for the lot 25 students also who have joined in because you will now be aware as to what kind of questions are you know you can potentially think that they are asked for the exam as well so make it a point that you are preparing yourself for something like this for the next year okay perfect guys already a lot of you have already started answering answer a is the you know right answer here award is presented annually on the 31st of august which is the what the birthday of ramen magazine now who was this person the third president of republic of philippines now he <clears throat> he is actually the inspiration behind this award okay now let's move ahead the southeast asian leaders resided myanmar what are we trying to talk about here the myanmar not only the myanmar crisis but also something with regards to asean okay so whenever you are trying to discuss the wars whenever we are trying to talk about the crisis relate that with the uh, global platforms relate that with the international organizations now this organization here we are trying to talk about the asean okay now let's move ahead now let's discuss the last bits of this passage what is this passage trying to talk about on the south china sea territorial disputes the asean leaders reaffirmed the need to enhance mutual trust and confidence okay this we have seen all of these things now let's quickly dive into the questions what is the first question trying to so, uh, say which of the following country is not the member of asean guys quick you know remember this thing that the question here is saying not the member ha huh? don't get confused okay chalo let's try to see the answers yes 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 perfect guys there are basically 10 members 
and amongst the 10 members what are we trying to see that laos cambodia and malaysia are already a part of the 10 members okay that is why answer d or you know option d is the right answer let's move ahead in which of the following year did the association of southeast asian nations that is asean was established what are we trying to see the options here are 1963 67 71 and 75 what do you think what's the right answer here come on Okay, okay. Some of you are saying A, some of you have started saying B. Let's see, let's see. B for bail. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful, guys. Perfect. So, B is the right answer. ASEAN was founded on 8th August 1967 with five initial members. Okay, now that we are trying to say it's 10 members, initially it was formed with five members. Who are these five members? Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, and Thailand. Okay, guys. Let's move ahead. Where is the headquarters for ASEAN located? Dhaka, Jakarta, Rangoon or Singapore? Please make a note and let me know quickly what is the answer for this. Okay, a lot of you have started answering. Let's see, let's see. Okay, okay. A lot of you are confused between A and B. Okay. Chalo. See, the correct answer here is B. The headquarters of ASEAN is located in Jakarta, that is Indonesia, which is also the capital. Okay. Remember it like this. Post the Secretary General of ASEAN is rotated among each members. Okay, guys. So, please make a note of this. Huh? Let's move ahead. Last question for this passage. Southeast Asian leaders decided that Myanmar won't take over the rotating leadership of their regional bloc as scheduled in the ASEAN diplomatic, uh, diplomats. And a leader said Tuesday in the latest blow to efforts by its ruling generals to gain international recognition after violently seizing power. Filling the blanks with the correct answer. What do you think? Myanmar ko kaun se year ka rotating leadership nahi diya gaya hai? Come on guys. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful guys. Wonderful. Superb. So, correct. C is the right answer. Myanmar won't take over the rotating leadership of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations as scheduled in the 2026 in the latest blow to efforts by its ruling generals to gain international, what? To gain international recognition after violently seizing power. Now, before I move ahead with, you know, the next passage, it's important for me to discuss this thing with you all. Control your mind or it controls you. What do I mean by this? Guys, always remember, CLAT is a part of your life. CLAT is not your whole life. Okay? Have that control. Have that, you know, confidence on yourself. Remember this thing that you can, you know, you have to control your mind. You have to control your goals. You have to know this thing. It is just a part of my life. It is just another exam this is not the end of my life this is not you know everything this is just a part of my life okay so don't let your mind control you okay guys let's move ahead let's try to quickly read the passage here what is this passage trying to talk about Okay, guys, have you all read this thing? Let's move ahead. Let's try to see the questions. Perfect. Now tell me, 
Now the passage was with regards to the Kaveri water dispute. It all started, if you have seen my reel, if you have seen my YouTube shorts, you all know the saying that this passage is with, you know, how, what did I ask you all to read about the Kaveri water dispute? Now that I'm trying to talk about all of this, let's try to understand the question here. Kaveri water dispute started 150 years ago with which of the following states? What are we trying to see? There is the, the A, B, C, D options here are discussing different, different combinations. What do you think? What is the right answer here? Okay, perfect, perfect. Madras and Mysore Presidency. The genesis of the dispute is 150 years old and dates to what? Two important agreements, two important, uh, you know, MOUs that were signed in the year 1892 and 1924. Okay, please make a note of this. Let's move ahead. Which of the following year did the Kaveri Water Disputes Tribunal, that is CWDT, was established? What do you think? What is the answer here? 1993, 92, 91 or 90? <coughs> Guys, always be aware of this thing that for your exam, you will have options that are very close to each other. You will have some options that is in the year 1990, 91, 92, 93. So remember this thing that you have to know the exact thing. If you are aware of it, only then play that gamble. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Some of you. Okay. Here I'm seeing a mixed approach. Some are saying A, some are saying D. Okay. Let's try to see. Let's try to see the answer here. Correct. The ones who have answered D is the right answer. Okay. I am seeing uh, options like D for dowry as well. Wonderful guys. Okay. So coming back to this D, sev after several years, the Kaveri Water Disputes Tribunal was established in the year 1990 to resolve the issue. Okay. Now let's move ahead. Who is currently holding the portfolio for the Minister of Jal Shakti. What do you think, guys? Let me also have some Jal. Yes, guys. What is the right answer? Perfect. Wonderful, guys. Wonderful. So good to see G.S. Shekhawat is the Union Minister of Jal Shakti. Perfect, guys. Wonderful. Yes, Gajendra Singh Shekhawat. Let's move ahead. Find the odd one out here. Karnataka, Telangana, Kerala, Tamil Nadu. What do you think is the right answer? Yes, I've already started receiving a lot of, you know, responses for this. Some of you are saying D, some of you are saying B. Then there are some students who are saying C. Okay, wonderful. Parth has already answered. Yashvi, Ruchi, Chaitanya, uh, Riya, Anurag, Tanishk, Mehek. Wonderful, guys. Superb. So, I'm seeing C as the right answer. Correct, guys. Wonderful. But, you know... The ones who have answered it as B, you are right because the state of Telangana is not related to CWDT. What is CWDT? We just saw the right answer here. Okay, guys, we sometime back we just saw CWDT. What is CWDT? And this is with regards to that. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. The ones who were thinking that B is the right answer, correct. Okay, now let's move ahead. Another important event that had taken place. <clears throat> another important event that had taken place with regards to, you know, the Uniform Civil Code and important topic of discussion that has been there in the last months. Okay, so what is this trying to talk about? The passage is discussing something with regards to Uniform Civil Code, then the Law Commission of India, then the current government in power and the important leaders as well. Okay, now let's move ahead. Let's try to see the next part of the passage. This is trying to talk about on June 14, the Law Commission of India invited public and recognized religious organizations 
to provide their views and ideas on uniform civil code wonderful so now quickly get into the questions now what is this first question trying to talk about which article on indian constitution mentions the india need for uniform civil code okay now when we are trying to talk about the articles of constitution what have we seen article 19 14 25 44 what do you think which is the right answer okay 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 perfect 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 wonderful guys wonderful see article 44 of the indian constitution mentions the directive principles that states what the state shall endeavor to secure for the citizens a uniform civil code throughout the territory of india remember this thing guys apart from this remember the what part 3 of the constitution part 3 of the constitution tries to talk about what fundamental rights now part 3 of the constitution if you know part 3 of the constitution immediately your all three options that is b c and d eliminates okay remember it like this now article 44 so part 3 of the constitution agar aapko yaad hoga you will be able to remember it like this that uniform civil code is not a part of part 3 of the constitution which is trying to talk about fundamental rights okay now let's move ahead what is the uniform civil code uh, what is the uniform civil code in india okay what do we mean by this now there are four options here a law that imposes a single religious code on all the citizens of india then b says a legislation that grants religious communities the rights to follow their own principal laws then c talks about a set of laws that govern the principal matters of all citizens regardless of their religion and d says a code that ensures uniformity in criminal laws across the uh, across india or across the country yes so a lot of you are answering it as c then there are some students who are answering it as b okay 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 superb so answer c is the right you know option c is the right answer uniform civil code in india refers to what to a set of laws that governs personal matters of all citizens regardless of their religion always remember in india there are a lot of religion based different different laws to govern all of these laws we are planning to have one single that is uniform civil code because for matters of criminal justice for matters of criminal laws we already have one specific you know statute we have one specific legislation okay guys let's move ahead what is the next question trying to say when was the first law commission set up in the independent india okay now in case even if you have options like 1927 1946 or 1944 remember something like this the uh, question here says independent india okay now here the options are different 1950 55 60 65 come on quickly answer and let me know what is the right answer here correct 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 wonderful the ones who have answered b you are absolutely right the first law commission of the independent india was established in the year 1955 for how many years it was for a 3 year term okay guys remember it like this perfect wonderful guys now let's discuss the last question for this important topic okay now you may have questions like this that may come okay a lot of you think that this is like a legal current affairs but it can also fall into your current affairs section altogether so remember it like this now which of the following supreme court judges recommended the need for ucc that is uniform civil code so we are seeing the shabano case the sarla mudgal case the polo contino or the maria uh, versus maria perera the uh, case that is in the year 2019 or the option d that is all of the above now what do you think you all remember the trick wonderful superb guys superb even though 
now you might be thinking that you know we don't know so many cases it does not matter always remember that one trick now you have to play that gamble a little but remember this thing that majority of the times there is this possibility that all of the above is the right answer okay or uh, in all of the above cases we have seen that supreme court recommended the need for ucc okay now let's move ahead for this passage we are also seeing the next question that is in india we are seeing that the personal laws are subject uh, or sub you know personal laws subjects like marriage divorce inheritance come under which of the following list what are we trying to see here union list state list concurrent list or the crpc that is the criminal procedure code i'm so happy to see so many you know responses and such great uh, comments and such active participation from you all wonderful guys wonderful superb superb in india the personal law subject like marriage divorce inheritance is a part of the concurrent list under the seven schedule okay so concurrent list ka matlab it is state can make the law and the union can also make the law but if the union makes the law the laws of the union prevails over the state okay coming to the next part coming to the next part of the passage what is this the final passage for the day that is passage 12 and this passage again another important discussion another important topic of discussion that is the central vista redevelopment project post this thing we will be taking up some important questions or post this we will be taking up some doubts that you all have okay so let's let's move ahead let's try to discuss the next bit of this passage that is uh trying to talk about the national symbol of the amrit kal and then we are trying to discuss the sengol and then its meaning and some important leaders and then in the year what spirit of 15th august 1947 so this is also trying to talk about the independence day time the day when india uh, you know got its independence then the last bit of this passage is discussing what uh trying to talk about some policies and then we move into uh, we dive into the questions so discussing this the first question that we have on which occasion did the first prime minister of india receive the sengol okay now before going ahead with the answer first tell me who was the first prime minister of india guys come on quickly answer first tell me who is the first prime minister of india yes 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 wonderful and now tell me who is the first president of india super super okay a lot of you have already started answering some are saying b some are saying d some are also saying c okay okay wonderful wonderful good 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 anurag good kinjal wonderful riya wonderful yes perfect mahek good now a lot of you have already answered some are saying b some are saying d okay wonderful now let's try to see the answer here the correct answer is d that is the night of august 14th 1947 if you try to see this correctly the passage mentions that jawaharlal nehru received the sengol on the night of august 14 1947 which was a special occasion celebrating what india's independence okay remember it like this guys let's move ahead sengol is a symbol of rule in which empire of the past we are seeing kushan cholas the mauryas and the marathas
Okay, okay, wonderful. I've already started seeing answers. B, 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 wonderful. Are superb guys. So wonderful. So already you have answered. It's the correct. It's the correct answer. B. Sengal is a symbol of the rule in the Chola Empire of the past. Now, now that you are all aware of the Chola Empire. In your class, I had discussed something. In the northern India, we are seeing two important figures from or two important symbols from the Chola dynasty or the Chola Empire. What are these two things? First, of course, is the Sengal, and what is the second one? What is the second one? Come on, guys, quickly answer. Yes, if you all remember, we had discussed this during the sessions. We had discussed this during the important sessions as well. Come on, let's try to remember this. The ones who have forgotten, guys, you remember? See, you. I know the ones who have forgotten have already made a note of this in their uh, class books. So please make a note of this. Yes, wonderful. Karnika, Ria, Zahid. Superb. Wonderful, guys. Wonderful. Yes, correct. The Natraj statue. Now, why do we remember this with regards to the G20 summit? Okay. Now, let's move ahead. The next is the, when was the old parliament building built? Now, imagine the answers here are so close. Okay. January 18, 1926. January 18, 1927. January 18, 1928 and January 18, 1930. Okay. Now, what do you think, guys? What is the right answer here? Because remember, when we are trying to talk about the new parliament building, it is important for us to also remember the old parliament building, the architects involved and everything with regards to this. If you remember in my reel and in my YouTube short, I had already told you guys with regards to the Central Vista Redevelopment Project. Okay. Some of you are answering it as A. Some have mentioned B. Some have mentioned C as well. Okay, let's try to see the right answer. The correct answer is B. On January 18th, 1927, Sir Bhupendranath Mitra, who was then the member of Governor General's Executive Council, was in charge of the Department of Industries and Labor. And he invited Lord, uh, <clears throat> Lord Irwin, then Viceroy of India, to inaugurate the building. Okay, guys. Remember the date correctly. Okay. Please remember it rightly. Let's move ahead. Let's try to see the next question. What is the name of the project associated with the new parliament building? I have already discussed this. I have been telling this. Come on, quickly answer this thing and let me know. Superb. Already a lot of you have already started answering this. Wonderful. Wonderful. Superb. 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 Wonderful, guys. The Central Vista Redevelopment Project is the right answer. Correct, guys. Correct. As a part of India's Central Vista Redevelopment Project, what are we trying to see? A new parliament building was constructed in New Delhi and it was inaugurated. When was this inaugurated? On the 28th of May, 2023 by the current Prime Minister, that is Narendra Modi. Okay, guys? Wonderful. Now, let's move ahead. The final question for this session that is, which of the which of the below mentioned points are true about the new parliament building? What are we trying to see? The building has a lifespan of more than of over 150 years, hexagonal shape designed to withstand <clears throat> 
what are we trying to see withstand earthquakes then it will feature 888 seats in the lok sabha chamber 384 seats in the rajya sabha chamber or all of the above superb guys wonderful yaar you are already you know you guys are amazing you have already started answering this wonderful majority of you are saying d some of you are saying a come on guys let's let's wait for some of your friends to you know answer this let's wait for one two more seconds superb wonderful yes you already know the trick all of you know the trick yes it's the right answer d is the correct answer all of the above you must be aware of this thing that you know you must be aware with regards to the new parliament building or the central vista redevelopment project now it is important in the last days of your clat we cannot afford to quit we cannot afford to take a pause so rather than thinking as that don't quit it's important for us to do it okay you majority of you have already answered it right majority of you have already are already aware of the content all you are expected to do is just revise you know don't get scared we are all here for you and as i told you this is not the end this is not the end at all okay so now before i start with you know before i come to the end of my session i want you all to let me know if you have any doubts okay so i am going to keep the session on for some doubt solving first let's quickly understand the doubts and then i am going to move ahead so there is some last bit of the session that i uh, have for you all before i you know move ahead before i have uh, talk to you about other things let's quickly keep the session open for doubts first then i will tell some more important topics that i want to discuss with you all and that i want you all to make a note of okay yes superb guys a lot of you are you know uh answering this or a lot of you are commenting like this is the start of nlu wonderful yaar you will we will try to keep a session on important judgments as well for sure but uh, apart from that yes i will be i am uh, i have already shared the important indexes with you all uh, in your whatsapp groups but i will reshare it by today night you will also receive some important indexes ka reports and you know just go through that uh, apart from that any other questions that you have anything that you want me to help you out with uh preferably vaidhi uh, vaidhi don't try to mark it it depends on your examiner there is a possibility that you know uh, if you mark in your question paper there can be a possibility that they might take your question paper so try not to do that because in general ways it is not allowed okay so don't uh, don't try to do this there is a rough page on that you can anyway write things so don't try to mark on the main uh, question paper because a lot of times it is not allowed you get separate 5 minutes for the initial filling and post that immediately your paper starts okay so uh, your form filling is uh, sorry your uh, omr filling the basic omr filling is different from the actual paper that happens between 2 to 4 you will remember it because once your omr is uh, submitted you will have after that 
once the answer sheet is released, you will be aware as to what kind of answer you have marked, na, beta. So don't don't think of it like this that you know if you are marking it on the question paper, they are going to allow you. It's a risk. So don't do that. Okay, five more minutes. I'm going to keep the session open for you all to ask the doubts. After that, I'm going to give you some more important topics that you must be aware of without fail. That, you know, in your last days of revision, don't, uh, don't uh, do this thing that, you know, make sure that you're revising it. Make sure that you're remembering these uh, things. Okay, now that you don't have uh, doubts for me, let's let's quickly begin with the uh, this thing, you know, some important topics that I want you all to make a note of. So the first will be the Chandrayaan, the space missions. So remember all the space missions that India has taken place, this that India has launched this year, as well as that India is planning to have in collaboration with other countries. Okay, so discuss, uh, so remember ISRO, remember JAXA, remember NASA, remember Russia Space Station, remember all of these things. Now, understanding this, remember the anniversaries, the celebration of five years, the celebration of 10 years, 25 years of Pokhran. Apart from that, what are we trying to see? 75 years of Operation Polo, then India's relation with India and uh, France. So remember the 25, uh, 25 years of partnership with India and France. Remember all of these things. Now, understanding this, there are some accidents that had taken place. So remember the Balasore train accident. Remember the other train accident that has taken place recently. Apart from that, remember all the important uh, international organizations. So when we are trying to talk about this, remember it via the summits. So remember the ASEAN, remember BRICS, remember G20. And G20 becomes anyway very, very important for us because India hosted it. So remember the meetings, remember the small, small elements that were a part of it. So remember the monuments, remember craft bazaar, discuss, you know, read about all of these things. Apart from that, what are we trying to see? Azadi ka Amrit Mahatsav, the Amrit Kaal of Azadi. Apart from that, what are we trying to see? Important, another uh, what do you say, climate-based study. So then we are trying to talk about COPS 28, which is which was already started and it will go till your exams as well. So remember COPS 28, then try to talk about this, uh, discuss or, you know, read about Cyclone Bipurjoy. Apart from that, uh, read the earthquakes that had taken place at different, different places, you know, read about all of this, then discuss the uh, Delhi climate change or climate issues, discuss about all of these things. Then we, we try to talk about awards. Divide your awards between the national and privates. So when we're trying to talk about awards, discuss the gallantry awards, discuss the, uh, what do you say? Uh, basically read the gallantry awards, then uh, read the Padma, Padma awards, all the Padma divisions, then uh, discuss the Raman Magasese Awards and other awards. So discuss about all of these things, okay? Make it a point that you're reading about all of these things, uh, you know, discussing this in your home itself so that you will remember these things. Now, make it a point that you're going through all of these content, only then you will be in a position to remember it, only then you will be in a position to the talk about or you know when this thing comes in your exam only then you'll be in a position to uh, have a good hold about it now understanding this there are some some of you who are asking that you know uh, ma'am should i carry a transparent uh, writing pad yes you must carry a transparent writing pad why because if you carry anything which has something written on it, you will not be allowed to carry that. So please make a note of all of these things. Anyway, your CLAT exams instruction manual has a lot of things. So please read the instruction and reach your center at the earliest and, you know, be, be completely, uh, make sure that you're, you're well, you have had a good sleep 
the earlier day apart from that all the important topics that i had already shared on the group please read about all of these things and uh in case you are still facing any kind of issues i have put in the qr code for scanning so you can just scan the qr code and connect to us on whatsapp apart from that we, i have put my email address as well so you can you know drop in an email in order to you know in your in case you are still facing some issues with regards to you understanding anything and you can any time i would suggest you all to explore our social media pages so just scan this qr code and you'll see all the social media pages and i want you to get you know go through the channels once and it's a humble request to you all to like share and subscribe and uh, i'm here for you all anything that you want anything that you need i'm here i'll help you out for all of these things and uh, you know in case if you're still going through problems if you're still going through uh, issues that you're not able to understand feel free to connect to either of our, uh, any of us we are all here students can connect to the nearest center somebody who's not a part of ims can just quickly scan these things and connect to us at any point of time and we are here for you all all the best students take care of yourselves study well sleep well rest well and eat well all the best for your exams take care and we'll see you in the next sessions Till then, bye-bye and take care.